I am TJ Tollickson, professional triathlete, CEO of Diamond Bikes, and today we are here to talk about history of bean bikes, part trois. Un, deux, trois. So, 2011, my wedding day, David Morris, who's working at Zip, shows up with this $1,200 Zip 2001 bike that I purchased from a Zip employee. I raced that in 2011 at New Orleans where uh, I had a flat and crashed hard, still finished the race. Raced it at Eagle Man where I won and then I won my first Ironman in Lake Placid on that zip frame. Fast forward to 2012, May of 2012, I have a hackathon in Boulder, Colorado at EDS Carbon Shop with Eric Strauss, David Morse, and Carl Hall. We designed this beautiful monstrosity, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is the first modern bean bike in existence, uh, designed in 2012, May of 2012 with that hackathon in Boulder. August of 2012, I raced this bike right here in the Ironman New York City uh, race, the one and only. There's only a handful of, of American guys uh, in, in this pro field, and so uh, you know the pressure's on kind of all of us to, to step our games up and and perform well. So good they could never have it again, or maybe so bad. I'm not sure. Uh, then September we took this bike to Interbike. We showed it off there. Then fast forward to 2013, May of 2013. David Moore's leaves it and joins Rooster Sports Diamond Bikes uh, to start converting our bag warehouse into a full-fledged carbon fiber factory. November of 2013, Scott Cheney rode the blue and yellow diamond, uh, the first diamond made in this factory right here to a Kona qualifying Ironman. First time he'd ever ridden the bike, first time anyone had actually ridden the bike uh, in an Ironman race. Scott Cheney piloted that bad boy, got a Kona qualifying spot, and forever minted himself in the history of Diamond Bikes. Then we go 2014, April of 2014, we start shipping Diamond Bikes to customers all over the world. August of 2014 uh, was huge for the company. I won Ironman Mont Tremblant, course record setting time on a diamond that was made in our factory right here. Uh, but the trend is on, it's real, it's crazy. And uh, Falco in January uh, of 2014, Benny from Falco introduced the Falco V. 5V, I don't know how you want to say it. Time trial bike, triathlon bike. Christian Kemp was the first athlete to uh, race that in 2014. Uh, so at some point, Falco went bankrupt. I don't know exactly when. I don't know if you say they went bankrupt. They closed their doors. They don't make or sell that bike anymore. It just seems a little pricey for a unique fixer upper opportunity. That's all. January of 2015 is huge for Diamond. We signed both Jordan Rapp and Jesse Thomas. Uh, to five-year contracts, um, really huge for the company. October of 2015, Mike Twelzik has the fastest bike split in the Ironman World Championships riding a diamond. That same month, Leslie Laughlin, the marketing manager of Cervelo, contacts us and buys a diamond for Cervelo to test in the wind tunnel. Uh, so you kind of remember that when Scott Cheney launched that bike during his race, that same trip in November of 2014, we took the diamond to the wind tunnel, the faster wind tunnel in Phoenix, Arizona, and boom, like the smackdown. It was pretty crazy, but the guys at Faster had a Cervelo P56 there. It was their test bike. Nothing had even come close to as fast as it was, certainly nothing had beat it. We went to the faster wind tunnel, boom, the diamond was faster, tested again, faster, faster, faster. Uh, these guys went nuts about it. We published the wind tunnel data on it, and that's the story of diamond. And uh, right after Mike Twelzik has the fastest bike split, Cervelo buys a bike, they start testing it. 
One year later, in July of 2016, so not quite a year later, uh, I had already left work for the day and I was driving home and Leslie Laughlin, the marketing manager, calls me on my cell phone and says, I need a really big favor. We're about to launch a new bike and we don't have your super fork, this fork right here, we don't have your super fork available to test at the wind tunnel. My whole engineering team is down in San Diego at the low speed wind tunnel and we need your fork, can you help me out? I said, yeah, sure, Leslie, I'll help you out. And so I turned around and went back to work and I FedEx overnighted a diamond super fork to the San Diego low speed wind tunnel October of 2016 at the Ironman World Championships, Cervelo launches the P5X beam bike. At the same time, Diamond launches the Marquee frame. So it was really kind of cool because Cervelo thought that they were like developing this super secret bike that was gonna be competitive with ours. But they launched that bike at the same time we took the notch up, we, we had what we we set off on this thing with the uh, Brilliant as our first frame, and then boom, we launched the Marquee, made an even faster frame. Uh, so we raised the bar again uh, at the same time the P5X was launched. And I will tell you, the best thing to happen to this company was Cervelo launching the P5X because it took what we were doing here at Diamond, this dream, this thing that started with me in 2011, riding a 15-year-old bean bike to my first Ironman win, and it validated it. It made it real. It said, wow, Cervelo, the biggest triathlon bike company in the world, dominates the Kona bike count every year, took notice, saw what we were doing, saw the wind tunnel results, and said, wow, we want to play in this space too and they've been playing in this space ever since. So, couldn't do this alone, so uh, couldn't think of a better partner to have in this than Cervelo. Uh, yeah, they're a competitor too, but I think, think of them more as a partner than a competitor. 2017 is a year where Reap actually comes out with a bike and uh, Harry Wiltshire races uh, Reap Beam Bike in Kona that year. Uh, 2018 is the year the uh, Marquee Disc Brake uh, bike is launched in Kona. And then uh, 2020 was the year, so 2019 in Kona uh, was the year, actually 2019 at Ironman Arizona was when we launched the Mogul frame. Uh, so you can see Diamond has played a rich history in this we don't have just one beam bike, but man, we launched the original, we launched the Super 4, we launched the Marquee, Marquee Disc Brake, and now a Mogul. All this in a short period of time of, well, if you count the prototype, we can go back to 2012, uh, November of 2013, first customer shipments, 2014, so we're looking at a seven year period right now. That's a lot of innovation in a short period of time. Uh, 2018 was also the year we saw Sipo launch their beam bike, the Shadow R. They had a kind of a cool, funky fork. And I'll tell you, right when that happened, man, I was at a loss because I was like, these guys are rewriting the rules of a fork and I haven't had a chance to test it in a wind tunnel and see if it's faster. And so after they launched that bike, I got a hold of the fork, put it on, uh, put it in the wind tunnel and, and tested to see how fast it was. And, then I was like, okay, great. This is a cool, innovative design, but I don't have to be worried about it. But uh, still a really cool concept, and I admire any company that's pushing the envelope forward. So uh, we had a couple other bikes that were in this mix around the same period of time. Ventum, which is a Z-frame, similar to the Lotus, uh, was launched in this time period as well. And then Tri-Rig, uh, which is also another Z-frame, made their Omni uh, bike in the same period of time. By all means, our, our, our unusual bikes, beam bikes, Z-bikes, are they the most common bikes that you see right now? No, absolutely not. It is much more affordable to manufacture a double diamond uh, geometry bike than it is this. But to me, it's worth it because you get the aerodynamic benefit of a lofted beam instead of a straight across uh, horizontal beam. 
uh, but you also get the benefit then of making it so it's somewhat easy to travel with because the beam just pops off the bike. And so there you have it. That's the history of the beam bikes. I hope you had some cool bikes to look at. Got a really cool history lesson and also said thank you to Cervelo for helping elevate the entire game. Thank you.